The story begins with our main protagonist, called Aiji Hashimiya, who is convinced that 10 years ago his wish destroyed the entire world. When he was only a small boy, Aiji made a wish with a special being. He doesn't quite remember what he wished for, but all he knows is that after his wish people all around the world started dying, and great destruction began. The people who survived tried to rebuild the world but it has taken a long time. Still parts of the planet are destroyed. Entire pieces of cities levitate in the sky, green skies, floods all over the world, and beings called the Order. These magical beings can grant wishes and powers. The theory is that one of them caused the great destruction and currently it is suspected there are 2,000 orders all around the world. Aiji thinks he himself is an order. In the present day, this is all part of everyday lectures in schools. Aiji doesn't have a lot of friends and a lot of the time he is bored in class. After school he goes to visit his stepsister, called Sina, in the hospital. She has a mysterious illness that none of the doctors can cure. After his visit, Aiji makes his way back home. As he walks down the destroyed streets, he blames himself for everything that has happened. He doesn't remember his wish clearly, but he remembers wishing that the world was destroyed. Suddenly he sees a group of desperate people marching and looking for orders. Finally Aiji manages to make it back home. There, he sees a floating girl with purple hair and eyes shaped like a cross. Her name is Daisy, and while Aiji doesn't know much about her, he knows that she appeared on the day of the Great Destruction. She has the power to turn someone's wish into a superpower. Aiji thinks both he and Daisy caused all of this destruction. Daisy greets Aiji and questions why he isn't using his powers. This angers Aiji. She tells him that he shouldn't be scared of using his powers as he doesn't quite remember what he wished for. Aiji is confused because he is convinced he caused the great destruction. Daisy just smiles and disappears. The next day at school a new transfer student joins the class, whose name is Rin. Aiji thinks she is very beautiful and for the first time is excited to be at school. Afterwards, just before he enters his apartment Rin meets Aiji. He is surprised and happy to see her. Rin tells him that she has lost her apartment key so maybe he can call a locksmith. Aiji wants to help her so he offers for her to come inside. The moment Aiji starts to unlock the door Rin uses a taser and knocks him unconscious. When Aiji wakes up Rin is revealed to be an assassin and is there to kill Aiji, who is revealed to be the order that destroyed the world. As Rin's parents died in the destruction this mission is also so personal. Just as Rin is about to stab Aiji his powers activate, and she stabs herself. Aiji in a panic runs away. Now helicopters and special units are searching for him. Elsewhere, members of the secret organization that sent Rin are disappointed that she disobeyed an order and went after Aiji. Sina gets a call, and on the other end is a panicked and scared Aiji. He promises to visit her soon in the hospital. The phone call calms down Aiji and he makes his way to his stepsister. When he arrives at the hospital it's all empty, until Rin and some soldiers show up. Somehow she totally regenerated and is now holding Sina as her hostage. Rin stabs Sina with her swords and tells Aiji to meet her in another location. Aiji loses control and wakes up in a parking lot where Daisy appears, and she again tries to make him remember his true wish. Aiji finally remembers that he didn't wish for world destruction but world domination. Aiji arrives and Rin unleashes insane amounts of gunfire on him. Nothing happens and Rin starts to heal Sina without even wanting to. Aiji then reveals his binding dominator, a power which creates a domain in which Aiji rules over anything. Any being caught in Aiji's domain submits to his will. After he takes over the soldiers Aiji now moves on to Rin. Rin remembers her parents dying in a giant fire and she also remembers when she gained the power to heal herself and others around her. In the present, Aiji takes control over her and submits her to his will. She is not allowed to attack Aiji nor Sina. This makes Rin go into a rage but she is unable to do anything to Aiji. Then suddenly Lieutenant Abraham Louis Frank shows up. He is also in order and has the power of time. He uses his power to smash Aiji's head into the floor. Aiji is captured and awakens tied up in a cell. Not even a moment passes and Rin shows up and starts to untie him. She explains that he has been captured and is now under the base of the Dazifu organization. She is still under his order and cannot kill him but she wants to free him so that others don't kill him. The two make way through the vents where Rin tries to fire off a bullet and kill Aiji with a ricochet, but she ends up killing herself. However, she regenerates in no time and promises that even though she can't harm Aiji or his sister for now, one day she will kill him. Rin tries to take Aiji through the most dangerous path so he dies, but all she manages to do is kill herself multiple times. Finally they find out where Sina is being held and Aiji wants to save her. Aiji and Rin fight off the soldiers and find Sina. She is levitating in a special chamber and Louis Frank is there guarding her. Rin has warned Aiji that Louis Frank can control time. Aiji tries to use three grenades to confuse Frank but their fight is interrupted when several other orders arrive and stop the battle. The orders start to clap for Aiji and introduce themselves as the Dazifu group of ten. The group's leader, called Yashitsune Hiragi, explains that their mission was never to harm them, but instead to have them lead Japan. Since the great destruction the Japanese government has not been able to function so they could use someone like Aiji to take control. 
However, we see that Hiragi seems to have a plan he's keeping secret. Aiji accepts to be the new ruler as the Dazefu group promises they will find a cure for Sina's illness. After being held prisoner for a while, Rin is released. Aiji is uneasy with this new position but he goes along with it anyway. He joins a meeting with the rest of the ten, and there he finds out the mission to conquer Yamaguchi. Aiji is shocked when it seems that he will have to be in the front lines of battle so he tries to come up with his own strategy. Kanumeri the main strategist uses his powers on him and tells him not to interfere. After the meeting one of the members of the ten gives Aiji a gun. Later the Dazifu group starts a broadcast with the Prime Minister. The broadcast is seen live on all the screens in Japan. The Prime Minister basically accuses Aiji of controlling the Dazifu organization to overturn the government. The Prime Minister then shows several hostages who are family members of the Dazifu 10. He starts executing them so Aiji is shocked and has to think fast. Aiji then comes up with a plan to show just how dangerous he is. He begins shooting and killing all the members of the Dazifu group 10. The Prime Minister doesn't understand what is happening. The broadcast ends and it is revealed that IG used his power to fake the bullet shots and all his allies are alive. This was just a way for him to stop the hostages from being killed. IG, Rin and a couple of soldiers move through the tunnel to arrive at Yamaguchi to conquer it. The tunnel starts to collapse and they need to run. In the last moments the same girl who gave IG the gun, called Io, shows up. She is part of the Ten and her order is seeing the future. With her power she manages to save Aiji and Rin. They manage to escape the tunnel before it collapses. Aiji notices that Io has a strange bunny headband but when he tries to touch it Io flies away. She tells him if anyone touches her headband she will get pregnant. Rin is attacked by Terra, the ruler of Yamaguchi and the Rock Order. Aiji and Io move in closer to help her, but suddenly Io starts to give birth. Confused and scared, Aiji tries to call for backup but no one picks up on the other side. Terra reveals to Rin that the Yuan has ordered a nuclear missile to hit Aiji, and it seems that in order to protect their homeland, the Dazifu government sent Aiji to Yamaguchi so that the nuclear missile hits there. Aiji takes Io to the hospital. While there, he realizes that he was the target all along and no help is coming. Aiji contacts Rin and commands her to attack Terra to buy some time. Terra uses her powers of rock and petrifies Rin. She later uses the giant rock monster to attack Aiji. At the last second Aiji manages to use his order power to create a force field. Terra then informs the citizens of Yamaguchi that Aiji is here, the one who caused the great destruction. The people start throwing rocks and attacking Aiji's force field. Meanwhile, Rin is still petrified when one of the ten arrives, called Major Sundan. It is revealed that Sundan was feeding information about Aiji to the enemy this whole time. Aiji takes control of Terra and the people around him. He also uses his order power to control the rock god. He apologizes for all his sins and promises that nobody will be hurt. His plan is to stop the nuclear missile. The rocket is launched and there are only seconds until impact. When the nuclear rocket comes close, Aiji tries to use his powers to affect gravity. This slows down the rocket just enough for the rock god to be able to catch it. The rocket is still too powerful but then some members of the Ten show up and help Aiji. They manage to stop the rocket, and it is revealed that the Dazifu government still needs Aiji. Hiragi gets on the line with the Yuan just before they launch the second nuclear missile. They refuse to make a deal and a second missile is launched. Aiji and his allies using the rock god prepare for the second missile. Terra realizes that Aiji is trying to help, and maybe isn't such a monster. She gives even more power to the rock god. The missile almost hits but Aiji with the help of the others manage to stop it from exploding. Sundan also transports Rin to the battlefield and she helps heal the rock god. After some time passes, Rin is in the hot spring with the other girls of the Dazefu government. Even Terra has joined them. She thinks about Aiji and her vengeance, and part of her is seeing him in a new light. Later Seiji arrives to see Sina has been transported into a room and Hiragi is there with her. Aiji attacks him but Hiragi tells him that his sister has no memory of the incident with Rin and she thinks everything is normal. Then he tells Aiji that his sister's illness is very advanced and she only has half a year to live. Later, Sina is taken in her wheelchair to a special room by Hiragi. There, Aiji shows up and wants to get back his sister but Hiragi tells him they will test if she has the potential to become an order. Hiragi also uses his order to overpower Aiji and command him to conquer Japan. Aiji and Rin go all over Japan as he uses his powers to slowly take over several cities. He takes over the Yakuza and other organizations that have power over the cities and its citizens. While on their travels, Aiji and Rin grow closer. They start sharing food and slowly the fire of vengeance in Rin's heart starts to become weaker as they both have grown closer. A man with a red eye then appears in the distance. His power is so great even Io senses him. While Rin is getting herself and Aiji some food, that same man appears behind her and releases her from Aiji and his order domain. She now has total freedom to kill Aiji. The Yakuza now seem to be attacking Aiji and he is confused to why his powers did not work. 
He is confronted by Hattori Hanzu, who turns out to have the same powers as Aiji. Rin shows up and attacks Aiji, also revealed to have the same eye as Hattori. The rest of the members of the Dazefu Ten shows up to help, and it is revealed in battle that Hattori is being controlled by someone else, a man with a red eye. Rin fights her former comrades and Aiji. Haragi also arrives and uses his order of changing fact into fiction to heal everybody and win the fight. Rin and Hattori also escape. Aiji is confused about what happened but then Daisy appears and reveals that the one behind this is Aiji's biological father, Hashimi Agenai. Aiji doesn't believe this new information about his father as he died 10 years ago when the Great Destruction happened. After some time, to take his mind off the situation Aiji and Io are sent on a mission. The whole time Io is thinking about her feelings towards Aiji. Meanwhile Aiji is thinking about Rin and what she is doing. When they arrive at their mission location they barely survive an avalanche and end up in an underground cave, where Io begins confessing her feelings but then some mysterious people appear. One of them introduces herself as Shuribayashi Kiroko, a Miko of Izumo. She promises to help Aiji's sister with her illness if both he and Io win a game against her. The trials start and at the end with both of their combined powers they manage to win. Right before Kiroko accepts to help, Matsudera Fumai who is also part of PS6, the same organization that Aiji previously faced appears. They battle but Aiji manages to get the upper hand. Later Fumai reveals that Daisy is actually a program that is used to locate orders. Daisy opens a portal to Rin and the others. A samurai order uses his powers and kills Kiroko. Later Aiji and Hiragi talk and finally Hiragi explains what Aiji's father really did. Hashimi Genai and Hiragi were scientists together and their work included turning wishes into powers. Genai was always a good man, until one day he changed. He created a program called Daisy that had the capacity to turn wishes into powers. Genai then killed the lab and betrayed Hiragi. Aiji can't believe what he is hearing. Rin and Hattori kidnap Sina, and Aiji tries going after them but fails. He later goes out on a journey with Sunnin to find his sister. It is revealed that Genai plans to unleash the second great destruction, and Sina decides that she will confront her father to try and stop him. Sina and Rin go out to eat before the meeting, where they connect and share a meal. Rin also tries to prepare Sina for the interview. When Sina arrives she sees Jinae and she notices that he doesn't look like the father she remembers. He hugs her and tells her an order. Genai had this whole thing planned and he uses Sina to announce to the world that IG is evil and needs to be stopped. Genai then picks up a weak Sina and takes her away. Aiji arrives at the building while Rin and Louis Frank try to stop Genai but they are defeated. Aiji arrives with an elevator and tries to save Sina. Suddenly a giant sword slash is unleashed on the building. Aiji gets both his arm and leg cut off and all the reporters and people in the building die because of the destruction. Genai tells Aiji that he will use Sina once again to begin a great destruction, and that Aiji has a role to play. Right before he leaves, Aiji activates his powers and regenerates which even impresses Genai. Later, the news blame Aiji for all the deaths and it seems that Daisy is monitoring people's feelings as hate and anger is spreading. Later Aiji awakens in a lab with Io by his side. She tries to seduce him but he refuses her advances as he cannot betray Sina. He explains that she is all he has. He then tells Io that Genai is not his father, but it is revealed that Daisy used an avatar to alter his memories. Aiji and Sina both remembered their father being kind and he looked different. This was all a way to make them forget. Elsewhere Hiragi and his team start an attack on Genai's base of operations. Genai and Sina talk where he reveals that it was Aiji who begged him to hurry up with his research so that they could cure Sina. In his desperate attempt to cure Sina, Genai discovered the gate theory which showed him that while our bodies are in this world, our minds are in a different reality. He also makes Sina remember everything. It wasn't Aiji who caused the great destruction, but it was Sina all alone. She first made a wish that opened the gate and created the orders, revealing that she destroyed the world. Aiji arrives just in time, and Genai tries to reason with him, showing him that this process will allow him to live any life he wants, in any universe he wants. Aiji refuses and goes after his sister. He awakens Sina and she stabs him. She remembers everything. It is revealed that after Sina opened the gate to the other world she couldn't control her powers and that is what caused the great destruction. Seeing his sister devastated by what she has done, Aiji developed a power that shifts her memories to him. She woke up in a bed sick and didn't remember anything. On the other hand, he convinced himself that he caused all the destruction. In the present, Sina is furious at her brother for lying and wants to open the gate again to make him happy. Aiji falls down into a pit where Rin was also trapped in. There, the two connect and with their love are able to heal and power up. The gate begins to open and Aiji and Rin attack Genai with Hiragi and his allies also helping them. Finally Hiragi uses his powers with his allies and kills Genai. With the help of the Iron God the portal remains stable and Aiji finds the original Daisy. There he wishes for one final wish. She warns him if he loses control another great destruction will happen. 
Aiji keeps calm and manages to reverse everything. The gate is forever closed which means no more orders. Everyone returns to normal and Aiji is now hailed as the hero who saved the universe. We see Aiji, Rin and Io all waiting for Sina to celebrate her birthday as now she is healthy and happy. And this brings the anime to an end. Comment if you would like a part 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.